Today I'm going to tell you how to change the output voltage on your Samlex pure sine wave power inverter. This information applies to the 2000 and 3000 watt units. It may also apply to the 1000 watt models. I don't know. I don't have one of those to look at. This information also applies to Go Power products and to Thor. I happen to have a Thor inverter sitting right down here on the ground and you can see it looks almost identical. In fact, if you open up a Thor inverter or a Go Power inverter, they actually say Samlex on the components inside, so they are the same thing with very minor differences. Now this did come with a user manual, however the manual does not tell you how to adjust the output voltage. All it says is that it can be done by a professional installer only, which is a bunch of crap, because if you know how to use one of these, a screwdriver, you can adjust the voltage yourself within just a few minutes. Now you cannot change one of these from a 120 volt model into a 240 volt model, for example, but they do have switches that allow you to select, I believe, 100 volts, 110, 115, or 120. Now the different brands come with different voltages from the factory. This one here, as it says right on the label, is set for 120 volts AC output. The Go Power inverters are typically set for 110 volts. This is a matter of preference. 110 volts allows some things to operate more efficiently. Things like light bulbs, heaters, fans, they take less power at 110 volts than they do at 120. Also, refrigerators take less energy to run at a lower output voltage, which extends your battery life. A refrigerator has to be manufactured so that it can run on very poor quality power. Say you live in a home or a location where the the electric company is only giving you 95 volts. People expect the refrigerators to work. So they have to design them so that they can work at those low voltages. And where I live, I have 125 volt power. That's pretty reliable for my power company. And my refrigerator is far less efficient than it could be, simply because they had a design for that low voltage that some people require. In any case, I don't want to babble on too long here. Let's uh, get to adjusting it. Now first, you can select between 50 and 60 hertz. They give you these dip switches right here for frequency and power saving options. That is nice, however, why do they let you adjust the frequency but not the voltage? I'm a little puzzled. Regardless, if you look inside the inverter, not sure if you can see this on camera, but there's a little red box right there that I'm shining my light on. And that is what you need to be able to get to. So the only way to do, get to that is to remove the six screws on the end panel. And once you do that, you can adjust the voltage. But first let me demonstrate for you that it is indeed set to 120 volts. I have it connected up to my batteries here. And I'm going to turn the power on. There it goes. This is a very nice inverter, by the way. I highly recommend Go Power, Samlex, or Thor. They're all built about the same and I'm extremely impressed with their performance, especially the 3000 watt models. They are somewhat pricey, but they're extremely good. Now, I uh, could show you an oscilloscope output of it, but instead I'm just going to do this. Approximately 121.5 volts, somewhere around there. This isn't perfectly accurate. It's actually close to 120. But uh, that is what it's set to right now. Now, my preference is 115 volts. It's a good compromise between efficiency at 110 and performance at 120. If I run extension cords or something out of this to my appliances, a 5 volt drop from 110 volts would bring it down to 105 and that may operate unacceptably on some appliances. 120 is probably excessive for what I really need so I'm going to margin it down to 115 and I'll show you how to do that. First we take off this end panel. But before you remove the end panel, obviously you'll want to turn it off because there is live voltage right inside here. And with the end panel popped off, you can see the switches here that I was referring to. Right now they are both up, they're both in the on position, and that apparently is 120 volts. I don't know what all the different settings are, it doesn't really matter. What you can do is just, with the inverter off, try a different setting. There's only four possible combinations with two switches. So I just flip switch number two down, and I'll turn the inverter on to check it. You can flip those switches with the inverter on. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do that. However, it does not actually change the voltage until you power cycle the inverter. So just do it with it off. It's safer, and you have to do it that way anyway. 
And now you can see over here that uh, the voltage changed to 115 volts, which is what I wanted. And I'll just demonstrate one more time here. The inverter's on right now, and I wouldn't recommend this, but you can flip the switch with the inverter on, and you can see that the voltage didn't change. They're now both in the down position. However, when I power cycle it, you'll notice that the voltage did in fact change. And it is now at 100 volts. I don't want 100 volts, so I'm going to set it back to 115. And there we are, 115 volts. Now all I have to do is screw the send panel back on, and I am done. And that is how you set the voltage in your Samlex, GoPower, or Thor Pure Sine Wave Power Inverter. Thanks for watching.